Okay, hello everybody. I guess that we can start this webinar, this informative session on our early session that's ongoing at Bocconi. Thank you for um, spending part of your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening with us. Um, just a few information on what you can expect from this webinar. So here is the agenda. There will be a first general part about Bocconi um, and all the opportunities that come with being a Bocconi student, all of our networks that are very important to us. Um, then we will follow with all the programs that we offer at Bocconi for our undergraduate studies. So we will get a bit more in deep in the academic part of our university. And then that will be followed by an in-depth part on the admission process and some FAQs just to anticipate um, all your questions that you might have about the admission process. Um, at the end, obviously, we'll have some closing statements about our office and who we are, and then there will be the uh, portion of the webinar dedicated to questions. Um, you see that you are uh, enabled to use the Q&A tab of this uh, Zoom meeting. Please don't use it right now because um, it's more important for us that you actually listen to the whole presentation and then we promise that we will open the Q&A at the end and we will be here to answer. So here with me today, we have the Director of the Guidance and Recruitment Office at Bocconi, Mario Tabarini. We have my colleague, Valeria, um, and also our student ambassador, Marco, who will uh, briefly give a testimony of his student life at Bocconi, because yes, there is a lot to study, but it's also a fun environment, we promise. So Marco will testify that later on. So uh, Mario, if you're ready, I think that we can start this webinar. Thank you so much, Ariana. Thank you and uh, welcome everybody. It's so great to see a few hundred students connected today. Uh, my name is Mario. As Ariana said, I'm in charge of the guidance and recruitment activities at Bocconi, and I will briefly introduce you to our university. So Bocconi was founded back in 1902, uh, very recent for Italian standards. We have the oldest universities in the world, medieval age, but it was the first university in Italy granting a degree in economics and commerce, and actually one of the first business schools in Europe at that time. Um, Bocconi has always been very keen on internationalization. We started our first exchange program uh, back in 1974, whereas the Erasmus program that you may be familiar with started in 1987. So Bocconi already uh, put in place student exchanges well before that date. Bocconi also established the first uh, bachelor program fully taught in English in Italy back in 2001. This gives you an idea of the DNA of our university, which uh, is located and based in Italy, very beautiful country, but it's by heart very much international since the beginning. And in fact, out of the 15,000 plus students that we have on campus, uh, we have 46% of students in the Bachelor taught in English, which are in classes, generally speaking, taught in English, which are the large majority, who are non-Italian. Actually, this percentage is even higher. It's it override 50% if we take into consideration this year intake, the students have just started this week. And we uh, see on campus lots of nationality, lots of people talking English, but several other languages as we have 100 plus nationalities on campus. So uh, Bocconi, uh, Ariana, if you can go to the next, Bocconi is well placed in the rankings. Uh, yeah, the, the, the rankings, of Bocconi are uh, pretty pretty good. Generally speaking, we are among the top 20 in the world in all the fields related to the social sciences, broadly speaking, and basically any ranking you may think of. When we're thinking about Europe, we are usually among the top three, top five, but when we think about the European Union, so taking off UK, A will be very often number one university. We are also very strong in research. You see here the ERC research grants given to scholars from universities in, in the European Union. And again, we are the university within the European Union, which received the most um, European research grant in any given year in our in our disciplines. So this gives us an idea of the strength of the Pocconi both, generally speaking, according to the general rankings, taking into consideration the placement, the diversity, and so on and so forth, but also very strong in research. This is a kind of unique in the international uh, higher education um, environment. So uh, the next slide, it's about the international network. As I mentioned, Bocconi has internationality in its DNA. 
And this is, uh, you know, confirmed by the fact that we have a very large network, uh, so lots of opportunities, 280 plus universities, uh, which gives our students around 2,000 of them uh, have the possibility to go uh, abroad for uh, for study abroad uh, exchanges uh, um, uh, opportunities, uh, but it combines quantity as that, so everybody can go with quality. So we basically have partnership with the best universities in each country, in each uh, geographical area, independently from any any ranking you may think. Of. So you see here uh, a very a very a, a very very clear, let's say, uh, idea of what we do and uh, the partners we work with. So, uh, going to the next one, Arianna, uh, employer relations. Bocconi was funded by an entrepreneur. So it was back in 1902, as mentioned, uh, Mr. Bocconi was a, a very, a very important entrepreneur in the city of Milan, in a textile industry, you know, man, Milan is very famous for that. And he, uh, you know, he, since the beginning, Bocconi was very much connected with employers. As of today, employers are very much present. They come on campus, do testimonials, present their opportunities, uh, participate into the classes with uh, helping the students or challenging the students with group works and uh, and projects. So it's very, very relevant for us, the combination of teaching and presence of the industry. So we actively collaborated with 4,000 employers. And as a, uh, let's say, consequence, uh, in uh, 2022, 13,000 placement and internship offers were given. So it was uh, basically every student had more than one opportunity. Um, we take advantage of the alumni community that we have, which is very large and it's all over the world, it's over 130,000 alumni, and we have our own fairs. The placement of our students is very good. You see uh, almost everybody one year after graduation work on the graduation day, it's already over 83%, and one third, more than one third of the students work and live abroad one year after graduation. These data are related to the master because the bachelors, let's say 90, 90 to 95% of the students of Bocconi uh, who take a bachelor at Bocconi, then they go on and continue to the master. If they go work, they find the work 100%, but the large majority go to the master. So these data are more consistent related to the masters. I think I have a last couple of slides and then leave the floor to my colleague uh, Valeria. One is about Milano and Italy. So uh, Italy sells itself. It's the, one of the countries in the world, uh, very often the top country in terms of people who want to come um, as tourists, of course, but also to come and study here is a, a student destination for several hundred of, of students from all over the world. Uh, Milan is the, uh, let's say, business capital of Italy. It's a student city, have seven universities. Uh, business capital of Italy meaning that all the multinational companies that are present in our country, if they are in Italy, they have their headquarters in the Milan area. It's also a financial hub. It's the fashion capital, uh, as everybody knows, design. It basically combines the beauty of an Italian city with the modern skyscrapers of a very, let's say, modern and innovative uh, European capital. As our actor said, it's basically the south of the north and the north of the south. So it gets the best of both worlds. Bocconi, uh, last word about uh, the cost of Bocconi. So our fees for the bachelor are approximately around 15,000 this year, but I can anticipate you that it will become official in a couple of months. But next year it will go, it will be around 16,000. Uh, but it's important, which is very competitive given the, uh, let's say, quality of Bocconi education, the uh, importance in the rankings and so on and so forth. So, uh, but at the same time, it's important to, for you to know that one out of four students do not pay uh, the full fee at Bocconi and receive sort of scholarships and financial aid. In fact, Bocconi invested this year 42 millions uh, on scholarships where it was around 23, so nearly doubled uh, in 2015. So in the recent years, Bocconi invested a lot in order to allow the students who cannot afford, uh, but are talented to come to our university. We have uh, scholarships which are need-based, merit-based. We have scholarships for international programs. And we also give the possibility to EU, EU citizens to get loans at a very, very convenient interest rate. 
so I'm done for my part of the presentation. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I leave the floor to Valeria, my colleague Valeria for the academics. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. I will share my part of the slide. Okay, perfect. So uh, welcome everyone. And thank you, Mario, for this overview on our beautiful university. I'm going to cover uh, the academic part. So what are you going to study uh, at Bocconi? But first of all, I would like to underline a bit how it works, uh, our undergraduate school, and uh, how it is composed, our undergraduate uh, body. So as you can see from this slide right now on the screen, on the undergraduate bachelor, we have around 8,000 students. This means that the other 7,000 students are in all our master programs. And in all the programs that are taught in English that you will see uh, in a bit are the big um, part of our programs right now, 46% uh, percent of the students are international. And always, as you can see from the slide, uh, uh, we are not speaking only about European students. So when we say international student, we cover like more than 100 nationalities on campus as um, was mentioning before. So we are very international. And this is also reflect on the uh, our uh, teaching body. So all the professor that are in our university, they come from all over the world and also them increase the number of the, of the um, country that uh, Bocconi University hosts in, uh, in uh, its campus. Let's start to speak more about the field of studies and the subject that you can study at Bocconi University. As Mario mentioned before, uh, Bocconi uh, started as an economic university. So as you can see from the picture, finance, economics and management are still right now, still in this day, the main, uh, the big part of uh, the field of study that you can found at Bocconi University. But then during the year, we cover other uh, fields of study. So like, for example, in 2015, we had our program in political science. Uh, the next year, 2016, we had the program in computer science. Then two years ago, we started to have the programs in artificial intelligence. And this year, we will have the first uh, class in global law. But let's cover more about uh, our bachelor programs. In this um, slide, you can see the list of all our programs. And as I was saying before, the main part of them right now are completely taught in English. We have only three Italian programs that are, for example, the first two, Economia Aziendale Management and Economia Management per Arte, Cultura, Comunicazione. They are the same uh, that we have in English. So International Economics and Management and Economics and Management for Arts, Culture and Communication. So if it happens that you knew also Italian, like you, you can decide when you do the application and apply for both the program, one in English and one in Italian. And we have also a um, traditional five-year program in Italian uh, related to law that is the one called Jurisprudenza. So uh, a part of this free, all the other program are completely taught in English. Uh, let's start to see the one that are related to the management, to the business area. The first one, international economics and management, is the more the general one that we have. So if you are interested in business management, but you are not, uh, you already don't know about the field of study, the field of um, where you want to work later, maybe this one could be a good choice. So you're going to study like, for example, how a company works at the different levels. So human resources, logistics, legal, finance. It's a very complete uh, program. Then, for example, if you're interested in the management era, but you have already an interest in like the area of art, art, culture and communication. So you would like to apply uh, the management study to uh, this specific um, subject. So the one economics and management for arts, culture and uh, communication will be a good fit for you. Also, this one is also um, a good solution for the students that are also good in high school in a subject that are more humanistic. It's a good balance between the more economics area and more humanistic subjects. 
the third um, programs that we have related to the business area is the World Bachelor in Business. Uh, it's a very particular program. I forgot to say at the beginning that all our bachelor last three years. The first uh, uh, particularity of this one is that it's a four-year program. Uh, so one year more than all the other traditional bachelor in Bocconi. Uh, then it's also a joint program. So you will get a triple degree from the three different universities that are part of this program. One, of course, is Bocconi. The second one is UC, the um, University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And the third one is the Hong Kong Science and Technology University. So you will study the first year in uh, Los Angeles, the second year in Hong Kong, the third the year in Bocconi and the last year it's up to you to decide where you want to go back. So it's very particular. Uh, you have to change uh, university, country, continent every 10 years, uh, 10, 10 months, sorry. Uh, so it's not for everyone. Uh, you have to be a citizen of the world, but of course is rewarding because at the end of that you will receive a triple degree. Then we have also the program in international economics and finance, as you can imagine, is more focused on finance. So it's quite similar. For example, the first year is the same on the one international economics and management. The first year is the same. But then in that one, you are going to start to focus more on finance, of course. Then our ambassador, Marco, that is here um, with us will um, talk uh, to you a bit uh, more about this finance program. And of course, at the end, when we will have our Q&A time, if you have some specific question on uh, this program, Marco will be available to answer all your questions. Uh, it's all. It's the only bachelor that we have with a major. So in the second year, you will be able to choose a different major for the last uh, year so to focus to still um, study and focus on finance or to change and focus more on the economics area. Then we start with the more quantitative program. The first one is economic and social sciences. Uh, sometimes uh, students think that the fact that is a uh, is social science in the names it means that you will study a lot of sociology that this kind of program is not so quantitative. Uh, actually, is one of the more quantitative that we have. Of course, you will study also a bit of sociology, but sociology will be only one of the tools uh, through uh, you are going to study how the uh, people are going to make decisions and how they are going to impact, for example, economics or uh, politics also. So you will have, it's a very um, quantitative program. It's very focused on pure economics. Then we have another field of study. So we move to the data science and uh, mathematics area. The first program that I'm going to um, talk you about is the economics management and computer science. As uh, Mario was uh, mentioning before, Bocconi uh, works a lot, uh, collaborate a lot with all the uh, company. Uh, so um, we understood that there were a lack um, of, like I will say, um, of, of a job position that was, for example, a, a person that was able to be good at work also in the management area, so in, man, in the managerial area, but also in the data science area. So uh, Bocconi decided to create this program, the Economics Management and Cover Computer Science, to cover uh, this bug in the system. So, of course, you will study a bit of economics uh, because it's also part of the title of this program, but you will study a lot of also all uh, the field of data science. So also in that case, it's good if you like, of course, quantitative subject, you will study a lot of statistics too. Uh, but of course, if you are in particular interest in all the data science and the IT area. Then the probably the most quantitative program that we have is the mathematical and computing science for artificial intelligence. It's quite new in Bocconi, but it's already true. It's the second year that we're going to have these programs. Uh, we are going to have also a master's so, uh, the, for the following two years of this bachelor. And this one is a bachelor in mathematics. All the other programs are bachelor in economics. This one is very focused in mathematics. So, of course, you really need to love mathematics in order to apply for that one. And the aim of the program is to give the student the instrument to create the next artificial intelligence tools. Then, of course, artificial intelligence tools that you can apply to the different sector uh, or department. 
Then moving to a more humanistic area, very less uh, quantitative, uh, I will talk about international politics and government. So this bachelor is related to the political science area. Uh, so of course you're going to study more like historic uh, international relations, but we are Bocconi, so of course you're going to study a bit of economics also in these programs. So uh, also because we think that a good politician has to go has to know also how it works, also the markets and everything, and economics in general to make the better decision. Uh, another very specific characteristic of this program is the fact that during the first year uh, you can decide to do an exchange um, that is uh, common to all our program in Bocconi. But in this program, if you want to go abroad, we are going to find your place because it's international politics so we strongly believe that it's important that you see you see the world and you see how other um country uh operate in different uh sector then the last program is the new one is the bachelor in global law uh, we have welcomed yesterday the new student for this program so we are not new to the law area in uh, to the legal area in Bocconi as I mentioned before we uh, have already a pro an Italian program five-year program that is the program uh, called the jurisprudenza uh, but we wanted to have a more international approach to law so in that case you're not going to study the how it, it works the Italian law but this program for example um, it's good if you want to for example I don't know maybe work in the legal aid department of an international organization or of a company it this one is a good uh, bachelor for this kind of uh, uh, perspective then of course if, if you are more interested in a traditional law and you know Italian of course you can apply for the jurisprudenza bachelor program then this was a very general uh, overview on our bachelor programs. I always like to underline that if you want to know uh, better about all the specific topics, all the specific subject, the career perspective of all our bachelor, my suggestion is always to participate to our open day because in that case, there will be the program director of each one of the bachelor that will explain you the study plan or the career perspective and everything. But speaking about the program structure, uh, all our program, they have, they have of course, uh, different subjects for different years, but the structure is quite the same, the same for all of them. So uh, the first two years are quite fixed uh, because you have to study the fundamentals, you have to improve and to focus on the specific subject. Uh, but Bocconi it's as uh, a more practical approach. So it's like you're not going to have to go to lesson, take notes and go home every week. This is not how Bocconi works. So it will be a more interactive way. There will be dependence also on the subject, on the professor professor on the different program but there will be also uh, different group works uh, there will be study case so it's a more interactive and practical way uh, but said so as I was mentioning before the first year you're going to study to focus on the fundamentals you will have of course also computer science you will have to study two foreign languages during your path in Bocconi one in the first year the second one in the second year and in the second year, you will go to study to focus more on your the core subject of your programs. Then, of course, there will be also seminar on soft skills and critical thinking. The last year is the one that you create by yourself. So, for example, if you want to go abroad, as I was saying before, during the second year, you can apply for at least uh, to up to 10 uh, different um uh, destination so you can spend one semester in one of our university partner or you can decide to do an internship so for example internship in Bocconi is not mandatory but a lot of students also try to take advantage of that and to try to have like an internship during the summer then of course there will be an a list of elective courses so also in that case you're going to um, decide which kind of path you want to follow in the next year deciding also specific elective courses and then, of course, you will have time to prepare for your final report for your thesis. 
Then we have uh, um, checked together all our bachelor, the academic life, but Bocconi is also a campus and the life at Bocconi campus is very active. So as you can see from this slide, we have more than 100 student association and they organize more than 200 events uh, every year. Then of, I'm sure that Marco will uh, also give you also a hint on this kind of uh, student uh, life at Bocconi. But I want to underline that also this is part of us of how a student enjoy our university. So uh, there, there are a lot of skills that you can develop in taking part of all the different events. And uh, uh, then of course, there are the one that I mentioned before organized by the student association, but there are also the one organized by the university. Bocconi is also a research university. So you will receive a lot of different uh, invitation to different conference meeting about different uh, kind of topics. So pick the one that you are interested in, go there, meet other people with the other with the same interest. And it's the same with the student association. There are like the more fun, I will say like the one for the association for wine, for beer, for movies, if you're interested uh, in all these kind of activities. There are the one, of course, uh, uh, there are um, the one of course dedicated to the sport so we have like an amazing new sports center with an olympic swimming pool for example but there are also student association related more to the field of study that of course Bocconi offers so if you are interested in data science of course there will be more than one student association related to this topic and it's a good way to make new friends to um, meet students from other programs not only your classmates to meet students from all over the world but that share your same interests and values. So it's a very good opportunities and also the skills that you're going to develop in this kind, all these kind of activities will be very useful also later when you will um, graduate from Bocconi and you will have to face uh, the real uh, job world. Then speaking about housing, uh, we have an um, urban campus. So we are in the city center of Milan. So we are very close to Duomo Square. That is the main square of Milan. Uh, but we have uh, also seven university dorms. Uh, three of them are literally on campus. So you're going to open like the window and see uh, the, your classroom. But the other four are in the same neighborhood where Bocconi is located. So they are very close. All the rooms are single rooms. So privacy is the most important thing that you can um, have in our dorms. But then you can decide if you want to have a private bathroom or to share a bathroom with another person of the same gender. Of course, not all the students are interested in applying to uh, one of our dorms, but uh, for my personal experience, when I'm talking to all the students that we have in the dorms, for an international student in particular, it's a good solution because it's your first year at the university, you are already changing from the high school to the university. Uh, it's a big change. You're going to, have to change uh, also country. Uh, so it's a good way to start to adapt uh, to a new life. And as I was mentioning before, for the association, it's the same, uh, it's the same way to get to know new students, uh, to make new friends from other programs. Sometimes the other students are older than you. So uh, it's also nice to see how they help um, uh, the new first uh, year student. And for this, you have to do a specific uh, application. So once you are going to be admitted, usually in May, so in the spring uh, semester, you're going to, you will be able to apply. There will be different sessions to apply for the dorms and for the different solution. Okay, finally, uh, I hope Marco, are you here? Yes, perfect. I can see you. Hi. Hi, Marco. Nice. Nice to have you here with us. So I want to leave you like a few seconds, uh, your amazing picture on the screen so all the our students can um, check them. Uh, but then, um, so I would like you to describe your experience in Bocconi, your life, uh, your activities and everything. But first of all, I would like you to start why you have chosen this specific picture to describe your experience at Bocconi. Uh, okay, so uh, in reality, there were like a lot more pictures. It's just that we couldn't fit them all in the slide. Um, I think it reassumes a little bit 
everything of my experience. It goes from the um, working style projects uh, where you could see the balance sheet of Prada. It goes to the Baconia jobs, which is one of the main uh, one of the main events that occurs in Baconia, where basically students are able to meet with companies, investment banks, ask them questions and all. Um, and then it goes back to friends, uh, to the intercultural. On the bottom left, there were uh, a couple of pictures of me and my well, some of my close friends uh, where I was going to talk about the in a massive amount of culture you're going to be thrown into a very diverse environment so where you're going to find hundreds and hundreds of different cultures. Only in that picture, you could find, I think, four different nationalities, one from Germany, an Indian guy, uh, two people from Italy, uh, an, an Iranian and somebody else, which I don't remember where he's from, but from another nationality, you know, it was a little bit mixed. But um, so the pictures show, first of all, that uh, if you're looking for an easy uh, and really chill university experience, this is probably the worst possible university you can come from. Uh, it will require, Bocconi will require you to study a lot, guys. So be ready to do that. It will be enjoyable if you love what you're doing. Uh, I extremely love these first three years. Oh, by the way, I just finished my bachelor and I'm staying for a master. This sh sh should say it all. If I'm staying for two more years, then it probably means that it's worth it. I mean, for my for me at least. So it will require you to work a lot, but at the same time will be extremely valuable and extremely fun. Uh, second of all, you're going to be thrown into a very, very diverse and cultural uh, environment. You're going to meet people from everywhere in the world. Also, remember that these people are probably going to be important people at some point in the future. So always want to keep the contacts in and remember when you took a coffee, you know, in the second year. Uh, it's always good to have a good network and all. And then, uh, as Valeria said, there's more than 100 associations in Bocconi. Personally, I'm in the consulting association. I'm in the fintech association. I'm in another one of capital management. There's also others more like the wine association, depending on your interest and all. Uh, also, you can pick an association which is totally different from your course. If you're in a finance guy like me and you're interested into the art association, you can always join that one. So your the ability to differentiate a little bit, but especially with the association, the important thing is that they allow you to work with companies outside of Bocconi. So they're you're they're gonna you're gonna be contacted by companies. They're gonna ask you to carry out some projects regarding finance, marketing, etc. Depending on which association you're in, and this allows you to have a contact already from the very beginning with companies they're going to pay you back with internship opportunities with network with contacts etc etc so that's also a great experience uh, the picture on the right uh, it was my first Bocconian jobs so the first event I attended as I said as Valeria said uh, there's going to be companies there's going to be investment banks that are going to come on campus literally on campus looking actively looking for Bocconi students for internships summer internships for off cycles, for any possible opportunity, job opportunities that you can imagine of, and you can ask them questions. What should I put in my CV? What should I not put in my CV? When to apply, how to apply, when applications open. You can also do a mini interview just to get going and they're gonna give you feedback on the spot. And last but not least, guys, in the end, you want, I wanna remember you that you're in Italy. I'm gonna be a little bit biased because I'm Italian, but you're probably one of the best countries where to eat. Uh, in the picture, you could see me and a friend of mine uh, eating a cannoli. It was so good. We actually went back and got two more. Uh, and it was in Bergamo because Milan is extremely well connected. You can go literally anywhere within a two hours range, anywhere in Italy, anywhere in Europe. For example, the, my first year I went to Edinburgh. It cost me 40 euros to go there and back. It was really, really cheap. It was really, really nice. And you can literally go anywhere for very cheap. You can eat some of the best food ever um, and you can also have fun. But I mean, Milan is also nice. Just keep in mind that it's just that you have also the ability to move around. So yes, you will need to work a lot, but eventually you will find the time to travel, go out with friends, meet new people and all. So this is my experience. Perfect, Marco. I have only uh, one last question for you. Then I want to assure all the students here that, as I was mentioning before, me, Arianna, and Marco will remain until the end. So then uh, later, if you have specific questions to Marco about his program or his uh, uh, 
student experience, please um, send us your question later. But I have one final question for you, Marco. Can you also explain a bit um, which de decision you make in your last year? So if you decided to take the exchange internship, which kind of electives, something like this? Okay, so in my last year, I actually went on exchange for my second semester. I went to Toulouse Business School in the south of France because I, I wanted to improve my French. Um, so yeah, as Valeria said, you're going to have the opportunity to do a, an exchange in your third year, either the first semester and the second semester. It will depend on which exams are going to be converted because obviously Bocconi needs to keep a minimum level, a minimum standard for their courses. And uh, and so I decided to go in the second semester since they were matching the courses I would, generally, I would have to take in Bocconi. So that's why I decided to go to France that's why I decided to go to Toulouse and that's why I decided to go and exchange exchange is exceptionally great I mean it allows you again to go into different cultures move into a different country start speaking another language after it wasn't my case to be honest but I've seen people going in exchange and after six months fluently speak another language I'm horrible with languages so it wasn't my case at all but it's possible so you know it's a different culture it's a different experience and uh, if you want to it's, uh, it's also to increase the cv if you want to go into a, a really good university it's also really good in the cv we have access to the top universities in the world so it's really up to you uh, regarding an internship uh, when when they came back from exchange i had a couple of months that what was free and so i applied for a couple of internship and so in the very last month and over the summer i started doing uh, an internship on, as a consultant in a small consulting firm. So that allowed me to uh, start the consulting world, understand a little bit if that's the path I want to go after for my master. I'm now applying for a summer internship for next year as I'm on my first year of uh, master. You know, it's two years, it's one year and a half, and then I'm going to have to start looking for a job and all. So uh, I'm, I'm, I wanted to try the, corp uh, the consulting world and see how that went. Uh, and now I'm going to apply for another role and see if that's a path I want to follow afterwards. So I decided to do a little internship. You can also do other kinds of internship. You can do longer internships. My internship was a little bit strange because it in the mid of the semester, but if you take an internship during the semester, you can also convert it instead of an exam during the second semester of your second year. Uh, so if you do want to do a longer internship, uh, you can also convert that uh, as part of an exam instead of an exam. It wasn't my case, but I did it for my pleasure, but you can also do that. Perfect. Thank you, Marco. So um, see you later during the Cune part. Uh, right now, I leave the floor to Arianna that is gonna uh, let you know about the, I'm sure the part that will uh, create more questions later. So Arianna, are you here? Thank you, Valeria. Yes, I'm here. You can hear me see me and most importantly, see my screen where I'm sharing the slides about the early application session and we'll um, go into the details of what you have to do to apply and when you have to apply, et cetera. Um, some of you made us notice that the Q&A tab is uh, not uh, usable right now. We know we will enable it later so you can actually focus on what we're saying and then we will open the possibility to ask any question you have. So let's start. First of all, the timeline, when to apply. So if you're following this webinar, we assume that you are in your final year of high school. If you're younger than that, it's perfectly fine, but you need to check back the dates for next year. So for those of you applying to start in September 2024, these are the three rounds of applications that we have this year. One early session, one winter session, and one spring session. Ongoing, we have the early session that will close on September 22, 3 p.m. Italian time. Then we have the winter session that's open between November 20 and January 26, 2024, um, always at 3 p.m. Italian time. And then the spring session, that's our last and residual session of application that is open between March 11 and April 12, 2024. So if you are here, I assume it's because you're inter interested in applying to the early session. Um, the good thing is that when you apply, you know, eight of land, late October, if you got in or not, if you got in, you still have two or three weeks to enroll. So early session, it's not like early decision in the US. It's not going to be binding. You still have two or three weeks to decide if you got in, if you want to enroll or not. But if you're not admitted, you can always reapply in winter session and also in spring session. So um, it's always worth 
trying to apply early because as I said, best case, you're in, wonderful, you secured your spot and you're done. Worst case, you can always reapply, but at least you receive the feedback from the admissions office. You understand where you positioned yourself in the general ranking. Okay, so um, here we go. What we look at when you are applying, a test, your grades, a CV and a motivational letter. So it's four easy elements. Um, let's look at the most important ones. Let's start from the test. You have three options. It's the SAT, ACT, or the online book only test. We don't have any sort of preference. It's up to you to decide which test you're taking. Sometimes students also try multiple tests. You can try both the SAT and the online book only test, see where you perform better, and then you're autonomous in deciding which score you have to apply. Keep in mind that the test counts for 55% of what will be your final score in the final ranking. So yes, it is the most important element of the admission process. The other very important element of the admission process is your grade. This means that we look at your final year grades from your second to last and third to last year of high school. This means grade 10 or 11 out of 12, sophomore and junior year, call it however you prefer. If your school system is in 13 years, like the UK system, then we look at grade 11 and 12. But the important thing is that we never look at your final year, because obviously when you're applying right now, you don't have your final year grades yet. And we also don't look at predicted. So we focus on grades that are from the past. And this is because we're more interested in the path that led you to who you are today, rather than just focusing on your final year that we know it's a year with already a lot of pressure on. So if your grades are super high, you know that you can afford a little lower test. If your grades are low or average, no problem. You can still apply. You just need to step it up at the test because the two elements obviously balance out each other. And your test, the test is your way of proving us today um, that you are um, wanting to come to Bocconi and you, that you can thrive at Bocconi as well. There are other two elements that we look at, and these are your resume and a motivational letter. Um, these are the more qualitative parts of the application. So use them, both the CV and a motivational letter, to show us who you are as a person. We see that you are a good student from your grades and from your test score. We're interested in knowing something more about you, about who you are when you're not studying. So take these two documents as an opportunity to talk about all your extracurricular activities. Anything that you do that makes you an interesting person to have in class will be interested in. Whether it's sport, music, volunteering, traveling, arts, whatever you do really is something uh, that we care about. And your motivational letter, this, is usually around a page or less than a page where you basically tell us, why do you wanna to come to Bocconi? Why do you wanna to come to Italy? Why are you interested in studying a specific program or another? So um, use it to show your motivation. Guys, please don't ask questions through the chat. As I already explained, we will enable the Q&A tab later. Maybe Valeria, you can enable it right now, but um, don't ask questions through the chat because that is not the right tool and we're not gonna use it to answer to your questions. Um, so going on with the elements, these four are the four main things that we look at. Other important things to know when you're applying, obviously you already have to sit in the test. So you take the test first and then you apply later. Um, other very important things, you apply through my application, that's our own portal online. It's on our website, it's super easy to find, it's super easy to navigate, we don't need your counselors or any external person to help, it's just you uploading all the documents in PDF, and then when you're ready, you can submit your application, so you're completely autonomous in that. One other very important thing to mention, when you apply to Bocconi, you can list up to four programs that you're interested in. Why is that? Well, first of all, some of our programs are similar. So it makes sense that you're interested in both business and finance or business and business for arts or politics and law. So it's not a penalty to list more than one program. You can list up to four and my recommendation is check out the study plans in advance. As Valeria told you, the study plan of our courses is fixed, at least for the first two years. So you can easily go on the website right now and check out the program structure and the specific study plan of each of our bachelor program. And you would know exactly which courses you'll be taking each semester for the first two years, which exams you will be sitting. So it's easy to understand if you're interested in that program or not. 
So do this research. And if there is more than one program that interests you, please do list them. Because um, obviously, the more you list, the higher the probabilities of being admitted. That's pretty straightforward. Now, a few things about the Bocconi test specifically, because I know that this usually raises a lot of questions. Uh, as I said, it's not um, it's not preferable for us to apply with the Bocconi test, with the SAT or with the ACT. It's totally up to you. What you have to remember about the Bocconi test is that it's entirely online, so you don't have to can come to campus to sit it. You can book it, again, autonomously online through our, um, through our website. It goes directly to the web testing platform, and you can select a day when to take the test. Also, um, when you book it, you book for the whole day. So you have 24 hours to sit the test. You don't have to book a specific time, which is also good because otherwise it would be a nightmare with the different time zones all over the world. So you have the whole day to take the test. The test is 50 multiple choice questions in 75 minutes. So obviously time managing is an important skill, an important asset to have, because if you do the math, this means one minute and a half per question, which is not a lot. Um, but Honestly, the goal of the Bocconi test is not to answer the whole Bocconi test, and I will explain why in a minute. It's 50 questions. It's the program right now, we changed it last year. It's very similar to the SAT. It's math, reading comprehension, numerical reasoning, critical thinking. So uh, it's a lot of logic and statistics and mathematics. Yes, and usually short paragraphs of essays to read and understand. But the reason why I'm saying that the goal is not to answer everything is because of how it's scored. So you basically get one point for each correct answer. You get zero point for each blank or void answer, but you get penalties for wrong answers. You get minus 0 0.2 for questions that have four answer options and minus 0 0.33 for a few questions that only have three answer options. So the student who sits in front of the Bocconi test and tries to answer everything just risk getting a negative score, which is obviously not the goal of the test. So um, this is what I'm saying. It has a different strategy compared to the SAT or ACT. Guessing is never a good strategy, guys, in general, but obviously you could go and guess at the SAT or ACT while guessing at the Bocconi test doesn't really work out because of the negative points. So it's up to you to decide whether you're sure enough and you want to answer a question or if you prefer to leave it blank. This is more or less what makes the Bocconi test hard, but the program of the Bocconi test is very similar to the SAT. Um, on the website, there is the full program and bullet points of what you can expect to find um, in the Bocconi test. So that is your uh, main guide when you're training for it. Moving on. Diploma requirements, a few general information. Diplomas must be awarded after at least 12 years. So 12 years of school, great. 13 years of school, great. 11 years, not enough to apply to Bukwani. Um, about the diplomas, a few things. We do not accept IB certificate. We only accept the full IB diploma. As I was saying, we don't look at predicted. You only apply with the grades from IB1 and the year before if you're taking the IB path. Um, if you're taking the US diploma, a minimum of three AP tests is mandatory by the Italian Ministry of Education. So you will need to have three AP tests passed with a grade of at least three out of five by the time you get your diploma. So it's not necessary to have it now for admissions, but you will need it by July um, with your diploma. Here you have a pie chart in this slide just to show you the origin of the current um, students in the undergraduate student body at Bocconi. As you can see, guys, not everybody comes in with an IB because it's a question that I get a lot. Do we need an IB to come to Bocconi? No, 34% of our students come in with an IB. It means that everybody else um, comes in with regular national diplomas, whether that's a French BAC, we do get our fair share of French BAC, our fair share of American diploma and our fair share of A-levels, but uh, these are all standard national diplomas. So would you accept them all, whether it's the vestibular or the Polish matura, would you accept everything as long as you stayed at least 12 years in the school system, in 12 years in school? Other two important things to mention from the slide, we do not have any specific requirement in terms of which subjects you, you choose in high school. So if you're taking the French back, we don't care which specialty you choose. If you're doing the IB, we don't care about which higher levels you choose. You guys, you study what you like. OK, obviously, consider that Bocconi is a business school and that if you're interested in the more quantitative courses, 
to come in with a stronger quantitative background is going to be easier for you. It's going to make the transition to university a bit more smooth, but it's not a requirement on our side. So you study what you like. The other important thing is that our admissions office offer is going to be unconditional. This means that once you're in, you're in. You just need to legally get your diploma to come to university, but you can live your last year of high school free of thought because we don't care about the grades that you will get in your last year of high school. Because for us, you've already been evaluated and admitted based on your grades from the past, your test, your CV, and your motivational letter. Okay, I know this is a lot of information, so I'll try and sum it up in one slide with some of the most frequently asked questions that we get on admissions. First of all, what is the minimum SAT or ACT score needed to apply? And do we have to take the SAT, essay, or ACT writing section? So no, we don't require the SAT, essay, or the ACT writing section. About scores, guys, it's a really tough question to answer, mainly because it's not the only element that we look at. As you know, it counts for 55% of what your B will be your final score in the final ranking, but grades count for 45. So um, the grades and the test balance out. Second, it depends on which course you're applying to. Third, it depends on the score of everybody else. So I could give you numbers, but then if everybody applies with a 1600 SAT, I raise my hand and there's nothing I can do about it. So I would say that on average for SAT, I recommend anything around 1350 and above for ACT, anything around 28 and above. And we do not accept super scores. So you have to pick your highest score, uh, but you cannot combine. What are my options if I'm not able to secure a spot to take SAT or ACT in time, which might be the case this, this session since the last SAT has already passed. It was on August 26. You can still participate in the early session by taking the online Bocconi test. Remember that you can take it maximum three times a year. So it's up to you to decide when to schedule it and how many attempts you want to use. Some students try it once for early and they keep a couple of attempts for winter session. You can do the opposite. It's totally up to you, but the total of available um, sessions for the Bocconi test for each candidate is going to be three. Uh, what subjects do you have to take in high school? Up to you, totally up to you. It is not mandatory to take higher level math or any specific advanced course in mathematics. How do I register for the online Bocconi test and how can I prepare for it? Again, it's very straightforward. You go on our website on the admissions page and there is a link that goes directly to the web testing platform. From there, you can register to take the Bocconi test, to book your date to take the Bocconi test. And then it takes usually 48 hours to receive your score by email. So consider that you need 48 hours to receive your score back and have the PDF that you can upload to the uh, My Application Portal and apply to Bocconi. How to prepare for the test? I already mentioned that. You can go on the website. There is a full detailed program and bullet points of every topic that you can expect to find in the Bocconi test. And that is your main guide. Other than that, Usually students still use SAT books, just keeping the program of the Bocconi test in by hand. And with that, always in mind, you can use easily the SAT books to train. Is it possible to change my program after I am admitted? This is actually a good question. You have two different options. As I was saying, when you apply to Bocconi, you can list up to four programs that you're interested in. And the way that this works is very transparent. When you apply, Given your, I mean, given your test score and your grades, you will receive a score that goes in the final ranking. Once we reach your position, you are evaluated for your first choice. If all the students above you have filled in the spots that were available for that course, then you are evaluated for your second choice and so on and so forth. Meaning that you could be the first left out of finance, but the first to enter politics. So you're always, um, competing with the students applying to that specific program. So if you get into your fourth choice, let's say, this means that you have been evaluated for your top three choices and you have considered not admittable to one of these programs. And so you are admitted to your fourth choice. So if you change your mind in the meantime, um, you can ask to be evaluated for one other program that you might not have listed in the four choices, um, but you cannot ask to change for one of the choices that were above the choices you were admitted to, okay? Because this means that you've already been evaluated to those programs and you were not admitted. So you can change, you can ask to change for a different program that was either a lower choice or a course that you don't, did not list. 
other option, you get in, you enroll, amazing. Then you realize that you wanted to study something different. At the end of your first year, you can ask for a change. You can ask to change uh, in a different program. It's not granted because for you to move, we need somebody else to move in that classroom. And in any case, the selection will be based on your merits. So your grades, your GPA in your first year of Bocconi. Um, it happens, it's, it's something doable, but it's not something that you can take for granted. If my final grades are lower than expected, can I lose my place at Bocconi? As I said, no, because the offer is unconditional. So we don't care about your final year grades. Once you're in, you're in. You need to get your diploma legally, but we don't care if you get it with the highest possible grade or with the lowest possible grade. I know I shouldn't be telling this to students, but that's how we work. Um, when and where will the admission results for early session be available? They will be available at the end of October on the ORF portal, so on the My Application page. You need to check your My Application. At a certain point, a tab that says results will pop up, and once that is clickable, you will see your result on screen. I'm done with the admission process part. A few things about who we are and what we do. We're the guidance and recruitment office. There is eight of us helping out, four of us based in Milan. You might have seen some of us around the world, since we all manage different markets. There is my colleague Barbara, Valeria, and Stefano, and that's us managing the undergraduate international team of the Guidance and Recruitment Office. And then we also have four liaison uh, based around the world. So we have Biata in Chicago, Summer in Shanghai, Joanna in Vienna, and Richa in Bangalore. So you can actually reach out to them if they are closer um, to where you are located, and feel free to ask them any question you have, or also book a meeting with them. This being said, follow us on social media. I always recommend scanning the QR code on the screen right now to follow the Meet Bocconi account on Instagram because this is the our, our account dedicated to prospective students. So this is where we post the timeline for admission, tips for the test, student life, uh, when the results come out and stuff like that. If you're more interested in finding out about the specific programs that we have at Bocconi, I usually recommend our YouTube channel because there are a few very useful video pills uh, done by the faculty and the course directors. So if you want to learn more about the programs, that's also a very useful channel. And then these are our contacts. So our email address, undergraduate.services.unibocconi.it, our phone number, and then the QR code. The top one goes to our brochure and the bottom one goes to our website directly. So feel free to um, use your phones right now and send the QR codes. In the meantime, I see that there is a lot of questions coming in. So um, I think that we can now close officially this part of the webinar. So if you need to go, thank you all for spending the last hour of your day with us. I hope that this session was informative. I know it's a lot of information, but hopefully it was the right and the good one. Um, you have all the way to reach out to us if you have any other question, and we'll stay a little longer for those of you who are interested in the Q&A part. Valeria, I see that you're back. So I think that we can now start. Um, is there a preferred... CV format for the application? No, there is not. You choose the one that suits you best, if it's the European one, a resume one, whatever you prefer, whatever is the best way to express your extracurricular activities. Um, would already having a finance internship in an international bank before university be an advantage to me? to get into the International Economics and Finance program? I mean, yes and no. Obviously, it's part of your CV. It's probably part of your motivational letter as well, because I'm pretty sure that this experience marked something in you if you're deciding to apply to finance. But it's not something required, and it's not something that will give you an advantage. Obviously, the CV and the motivational part are less important, I would say, than the test and the grades, as you can see from the percentage that we give. Again, we're very transparent. So if we have two very similar profiles um, applying for the same program, we're going to look at your CV and motivation as well. And obviously, if you are um, a better fit for the program, you have better chances of being admitted. But, you know, the grades and the test are what make the decision. If in my home country there are 12 years of school, may I submit the transcript of the final years from grade 9, 10, 11 grade? I mean, if you have them all in one single document, obviously you will up upload that document. This happens a lot, for example, in the Turkish system where you have your grades from high school all on the same page, but you will be evaluated only in grades 10 and 11 out of 12. 
For U.S. students, do you require a specific number of AP classes taken before 12th grade? We don't care as long as you receive, as long as you have three AP tests passed with at least a score of three out of five um, in the, um, at the end, by the time you get your diploma. So we don't care which AP courses you're taking and how many you took in which year, as long as you have three um, by the time you're done with high school. Is the personal statement double or single spaced? However you prefer, just do whatever you like better. I said one page, usually single spaced, but guys, it doesn't have to be too long or too short, just write whatever you want. Then whatever makes your application stand out a bit more. Are some courses more competitive than others? If so, what are the more competitive programs? No, I wouldn't say that there are more competitive programs than other because the number of places that we offer is proportional. So you will see, for example, that for the International Economics and Management program, we have six classes. And for the AI program or the politics program, we only have one. That's because there are a lot more students who want to apply to general business and they are interested in politics or AI. So it's it's pretty proportioned. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Remember to always list the programs when you are applying um, in order of your own preference because you are evaluated in order. So that's the only order that matters. Um, I wanted, Ari, sorry, to answer to um, two, diff two questions similar for the World Bachelor in Business uh, and about the application process. Uh, these students are interested both in the World Bachelor in Business and a traditional Bachelor in Bocconi. You can apply uh, for both of them because, first of all, the application uh, procedure is completely different. So the one for the World Bachelor in Business is through Common App, so the American system. And for our traditional bachelor, you have to apply through Bocconi system. And for both of them, it's a, if you are in your final year, uh, the application are already open for the traditional one. The early session is open. This is why we are here. And for the World Bachelor in Business, uh, it's already open. It's different because it's already open from the summer. It's going to close in November for the, we say, we're going to say the early application for the uh, World Bachelor in Business and in December for the um, normal application. Right. But you will receive the result in April. So at that point, you already know if you have been admitted or not to a traditional bachelor program, you have to confirm your place to the traditional program in Bocconi. And then if you have, if you are very good and you're going to be admitted also for the World Bachelor in Business, that in April, it will up to you to decide to which one uh, you want to to start during in, uh, in September. So in that case, we, for example, if you already have paid your first installment for a traditional bachelor in Bocconi, uh, this money will be transferred to the World Bachelor in Business if you decide to pursue it this, uh, this way. And there were also another question also related to the World Bachelor in Business. Why, um, what are the advantages of taking the four year World Bachelor uh, there are a lot of advantages. I mean, you're going to travel a lot <laughs> during this year. Uh, you're going to stay in a class that is like 50, 60 students from all over the world. You're going to travel and discover a new country together. So usually uh, this kind of, a I mean, you're going to be very close with your classmates. And then, of course, you're going to receive a, a triple degree from three different universities all around the world. Or you're going to to open to work in different uh, in the different European, American, and Asian uh, job market. Uh, you are open to the three different alumni networks. So, I mean, after this kind of program, uh, you are gonna to have a lot of skills that will be very very useful in the job market. And then I'm sure that it's also will affect you uh, on the personal level, on the personal skill that you can develop in this. Um, in this program. If I can add a couple of things on the WBB, yes, that's how we call the World Bachelor in Business. It's not better or worse than any standard Bocconi program, okay? That's why, as Valeria was mentioning, students usually apply to both. You apply to Bocconi, you get in the early session, you secure your spot, that's amazing. You also apply to the World Bachelor. If you got in, you find out in spring, and as Vale was saying, we just move whatever money you paid to secure your Bocconi spot. If you didn't get in the WBB, the World Bachelor, it's perfectly fine. You still have your pretty awesome plan B for a Bocconi standard program. It's not a program for everybody because you're moving a lot. 
Um, and also because also it's a general program. So you see what it's like to do business in Asia, in the US and in Europe, but you're not focusing on anything specific. And it's also four years. So it's really up to you to decide which one you prefer. So it's it's not like one is better than the other. They're just very different. So it's a very personal choice. Also, questions. Can you give some info about the exchange program, which universities have brought in requirements, etc.? So, Vale, maybe you want to post yeah. in the chat list of the 283 partner unis. Please don't make me list them all. Oh, they are a lot. Um, as Maria was mentioning, the exchange program is not mandatory. It's something that you can decide to do in your third year, either first or second semester. You can apply during your second year and the application, it's only gonna be merit-based. So we only look at your GPA at the point. Uh, so guys, study hard. Obviously studying harder will allow you to consider you know, better universities. All the universities in the network are great universities, but obviously if you're aiming for the Ivy League, you know that you will have a perfect, you will need a perfect GPA to access the Ivy League. Otherwise, um, with lower uh, scores, you will still be able to access really great universities all over the planet. Um, so that's the only requirement. And then when you apply, you can list up to 10 exchange partner universities that you're interested in, again, in order to have preference. And um, you will be able to understand also with the help of the International Relations Office, which universities you can aim for with your current GPA of when you're the time you're applying. So it's, it's very, very easy. Is SAT enough? We don't need the IELTS. Guys, let's not confuse the standardized test with the English language test. But idea, maybe you can also post in the chat yes. the link to the English requirements. So. An English test is not necessary to apply to Bocconi. We don't require an English test. We will require an English, some sort of English proof certificate to enroll to Bocconi, so after admission. If your diploma is already in English because you are taking the AB, you're taking the OIB or uh, F how it's called right now, they change it, the French back with the Option International. If you're taking the American High School Diploma, obviously, or the A-levels, we do not need an English certificate. But if you're taking any other diploma that's taught in a language that's different from English, we do require a B2 level of English by the time you enroll. And this can be certificated with the TOEFL, the IELTS, Duolingo, the Cambridge exams from the first, the proficiency. So it's up to you. There's a, a lot of different ways you can certificate it. But the important thing is that you don't need it to apply. You need it only later after being admitted. There is a similar question, Ari. Do you still need SAT and ACT exams to be taken if you're doing full IB diploma? Yes. This is also another question that I receive a lot. Doing the full IBDP is not a waiver for the standardized test. SAT, ACT, or the online Bocconi test are always mandatory no matter which diploma you are applying with. Then I see another question that's, is the European BAC okay? Yes, we have a lot of, of students applying with the European BAC. It's perfectly fine. It's one of the many diplomas that our students apply with. Marco, are you still there? We have a few questions for you as well. Yes. Good. Um, how do you believe the program, International Economics and Finance, prepared you for the world of finance? Was it easy to find internships? Ooh. Uh, okay. First of all, I'm not, I'm, I'm starting to look for internships right now. So I can't really answer that question fully. If it was easy to find the internship, the small internship I did the, at the end of my third year, yes, because it was actually, I, I wasn't really looking for it. It was actually, I had Hunter contacting me through LinkedIn um, that asked me if I wanted to join. Uh, since, I mean, for my second into third year, I it's only, sorry, my second year, I think I received like 14 to 16. I'm not sure about the number exactly of job opportunities. So if you're afraid to find an internship afterwards, absolutely not. Do not be afraid. You're going to have a LinkedIn profile and there's going to be ad hunters continually like looking up for Bocconi students and going to look for you. So no, finding an internship is not a problem. Uh, yes. So, uh, but I'm, I'm still want to apply. I'm now trying to apply into the investment banks, which if you're in the finance world is the, mm, 
one of the most looked up places to go after your finance degree, uh, if you're looking for a hard job afterwards. Um, but I'm still applying right now. I received some applications. My CV has always gone through, so I've never been rejected um, at the first stage. But the stage afterwards so will depend on the, uh, you know, if, if there's an assessment, it will depend on your knowledge. If there's an interview, again, it will depend on your knowledge. But I haven't done that yet that. So I can't really answer a question about that. But if you're look, if you're afraid to find an internship, no worries, you will find one in the easiest way possible. Great, thank you. Um, let me see. Then I'm I'm seeing a few questions. Let me go back. Um, well, I see a few questions about scholarships. So maybe Vale, we can touch base on that. Maybe you can post in the chat the link yes. that goes to the fees and scholarship page of Bookcoiny. But guys, don't worry about scholarships too much right now because for the need based one, it's something that you have to worry about after being admitted, usually in spring. So don't worry about that right now. It's a separate application to ask for the need based scholarship, whether it's fees relief target or ISU. It's going to be later on during the year. For a merit based, you don't have to apply. All students, when they're applying to the Coney, they're also automatically evaluated for merit-based scholarship. So those can be 50% or 100% fee tuition waiver. If you get a merit-based scholarship, you find out together with your admission result. So it's an information that you have in advance when you are um, when you are receiving your admission. So if when you're deciding if you want to enroll or not. So again, don't uh, stress too much about it because you don't have to um, you don't have to separately apply for that. Um, uh, there, there was a question about, uh, like, for example, there was Elisa uh, that was saying she studied in a public high school for the first three years. Then she moved to a uh, to IB diploma for 11 and 12th grade. In that case, you are going to apply as international student because uh, uh, what is important for us is the diploma that you're going to get. So in that case, we will be uh, an international one. And then it was like, can I change my program when I have already started one? Uh, yes, as we mentioned before, some programs like the finance one and the management one, the first year is the same. So in that case, it will be an advantage, but Anyway, uh, yes, during the summer between the first and the second year, if you are not sure about the path that you're following, you can uh, request a change. Uh, it's a procedure that we have in our university, so uh, you can make a request. Okay. A few other things on the courses. Can I apply for economics management and computer science without a background in programming? Uh, and if I didn't choose computer science in the DP program, absolutely 100% yes. We will restart everything from zero. Um, obviously, having some sort of background will help you better understand if you're actually into those subjects and if you like them. But if you are sure about your choice, we don't have any requirement uh, in terms of subjects that you've taken. So it doesn't matter if you come in with a zero background in computing. Um, we will teach you everything from scratch. Will a strong CV and motivational letter influence the admission chances? Again, 45% is the grades, 55% is the test. Guys, that makes 100%. As I said, motivational letter and the CV are taken into consideration for the admission purpose only if two very similar profiles um, grade-wise and test-wise are applying to the same program. At that point, they make the difference. What they really, really matter for is merit-based scholarships. So if you're routing for a scholarship, make sure your CV and motivational letters stand out. Um, yeah. How do we review lesser known grade systems like non -US, UK, US, BAC, or IB? Um, more than 50% of our students apply with random national diplomas that go from New Zealand to Brazil to Sweden. So don't worry, the admissions office is super familiar with all types of diploma. If you have a school profile or if you have a specific explanation on how to interpret your grades, feel free to attach that in the same PDF of your transcript. But I'm pretty sure it's not necessary because we see students coming from literally every corner of the planet. Um, do both early and winter session have an equal probability for admission and scholarship? Thank you. Um, thank you, Alexandru. So honestly, 
apply earlier if you can. In early session, more scholarships are available and then they uh, we give them out throughout the rounds. Um, admission wise, I would say that usually around 40% of spots are allocated in early session and 50% in winter session. Winter session is still our main application round. We do understand that not everybody's ready to apply in early. So consider that together early and winter session usually give out 90% or more of the available spots, leaving spring session to be super residual. Can already graduated students apply early too? Yes, everybody can apply as long as you know that you will be starting September 2024. So there is no intake in the spring semester. You all start in September. And also then even if you already got your diploma, you will still be evaluated on the same criteria as everybody else. So a standardized test, SAT, ACT, or our own online Bocconi test, and your grades from second to last and third to last year of high school. It wouldn't be fair to evaluate uh, your diploma since you would be the only student having it. So um, you will be evaluated on the same criteria of everybody else. Guys, there's a lot of questions here. So yes, you will get a recording of this webinar at the end. Uh, in the next couple of days, you will receive the registration. Um, vale? I add, yes, I want to add only a few things. There were two questions about the 12 years uh, in school. This is a very important part. It's a minister ministerial rule. So we can change that. But yes, you can apply to Bocconi only after, uh, I mean, you have to complete 12 years in a school. So uh, please uh, be uh, be sure about this part. Uh, so you have to find like, for example, or you have to find uh, like, um, if you're having like only 11 years, it means that you can like, for example, apply to another university in your country, uh, do one year there and then uh, request a transfer and start from the beginning at Bocconi University. Uh, this is like, for example, one uh, one solution, but I will post uh, also this uh, information on the chat. Uh, there were one student were asking about the open days. Yes, we uh, now our next open day will be on December 2nd. It's a Saturday. Uh, it's online also and on campus. So if it happens to you to be in Milan, we are very happy to have you on campus. It's a very uh, special day for us. But if you're not able to come to Milan, of course, it's uh, online. It's a Saturday. You can uh, attend it from your uh, uh, from your home with your parents uh, and there will be also a lot of activities so it's as I was mentioning before it's a very important moment for uh, for you in particular I wanted to answer another important topic um, a few Italian students are asking if they can apply as Italian or international students depending on which school they're attending guys to apply as an Italian student, you it doesn't matter your citizenship. You need to get an Italian diploma di maturità in an Italian high school in Italy. All other cases, so international schools in Italy, Italian high schools abroad, international high schools abroad, are considered international students. So it doesn't matter if you have an Italian citizenship, what makes the difference is your diploma, the diploma that you're getting. Also about housing. I see a lot of questions on the housing dorms. Again, guys, don't worry about it too much right now because um, it's something that you will have to worry starting next March slash next April. Um, if you get in the early session, your first possibility to apply for housing will probably be in spring. So, and then from there on until summer. So um, there will be multiple options to apply for housing. It's not impossible to get a housing spot at Bocconi. So don't worry about it right now get uh, in Bocconi first, and then we worry about housing. Um, for WBB, no. It, the question here is from Fares. How does the WBB admission work, the World Bachelor in Business? Do the three universities need to accept you for an admission in the program? No. Uh, it's a specific and dedicated application just to this program. It passes through USC on Common App but the decision is not made just by USC. There is a committee of admissions office people of the three universities that gather together and they decide who's in and who's not. So the decision is made by the three universities together. What else? Um, Valeria, did you see any other question? Maybe for Marco? Uh, yes, there was a question for Marco. Um... Let me check if I'm finding again. Well, maybe uh, I yes. already answered them. Okay, no. Marcus was like, "Do you think it? What do you think it was your your differential that made you be accepted at Bocconi?" 
Uh, Ooh, uh, I actually don't know because when I applied, I didn't receive my Bocconi grade because I took the Bocconi test. So I did. I don't know what my Bocconi grade was. Um, so I can't answer on that front. I know I had a really strong grade. I had around I, at the end of uh, IB one at around a forty two for my IB grades. Um, my third to last year grades were also really good. I know that side was strong. Uh, I am also assuming my test was strong, but I can't really say there was one, yeah, there was one stronger than the other as I don't have my point. I don't have my score for my Bocconi test. Now it's different. Now you guys will be able to have your, to view your score. Um, but again, uh, I don't know. It also depends on the other applicants that are applying. As I said, if you, as Arena said, if you have a 1550, uh, 1550, sorry, for the SAT, and uh, I don't know, 45 out of 45 in the AB, but everybody else that applies as a 1600 and a 45 out of 45 in the AB, it's not that you're not a good student, but you're not going to get admitted because everybody else is going to take all of these spots since they have a higher grade. So again, it will depend both on your grades, yes, and your Bocconi test and all, but it, these grades will be compared among, among the other applicants. So it will depend on the session, it will depend on the grades, it will depend on the Bocconi test. Try and give your best in everything. Do not underestimate anything um, and then see how it goes. Worst case, apply as early as possible. Worst case, we can retry in the winter session. Worst case, you can retry in the spring session. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Marco. Um, I saw a few questions about specific courses. Um, what are the most interesting classes in international politics and government? I'm pretty sure Valeria can just post in the chat the study plan of the VAG program, which is a program in international politics and government. If you're interested in this program specifically, keep in mind that it's a Bachelor of Science and not a Bachelor of Arts. And to me, that's what makes this program special because it's politics, but then at the business school. So of the five areas that you can focus on when you're studying politics that are law, politics, sociology, history, and business. Each university will focus more on one or more on the other. We focus more on business because we're book 20. So um, it's gonna be a more practical course. It's not about studying the history of the world and predicting the future. It's more about let's evaluate, let's implement this policy and evaluate costs and consequences. So if that is what you're looking for, if you wanna become a good policymaker, then this course is perfect for you. But yes, it has a bit of a quantitative basis because to become a good policymaker is you need your numbers. And so check out the study plan and you will figure out all the classes um, that are in there. Also, if you're admitted in October, um, you usually have from two to three weeks to enroll to secure your spot. Um, I saw a few questions on this. So your enrollment is open for two to three weeks and that's the time that you have to decide if you want to secure your spot or not. Um, if you get in and you decide not to enroll, obviously you can reapply in winter session, but you have zero guarantee of the fact that you will get in again because the competition of each round is different from the previous round. So um, it doesn't it doesn't guarantee you that you will be re-admitted uh, in winter session if you reapply. So my suggestion would be to secure your spot in early session and be very happy and honored of the fact that you got admitted. Then I have a question from Emma, I think. The Bachelor Art, Culture and Communication is worldwide recognized. Yes, of course. The, this program, we receive a lot of questions on it. It's a Bachelor in Economics and Management for Arts, Culture and Communication. It's still a degree in business, guys. It's just business applied to the creative industries. So rather than being general business ap applicable to any field, it has a bit more of a human side to it. It has courses in philosophy and aesthetic. Um, and it also has a few applied courses like marketing for a nonprofit event or strategy for the creative industries. So it goes more towards that specific world. If you already know that you want to work in a luxury company, fashion company, music production, museum, theater, or something like that, obviously from the managerial side of things, then this can be the perfect program for you. And then for a master, you usually just specialize a bit more in the same field. That's what most students do. Vale, is there any question that you've seen that you want to answer specifically? Mm -hmm. It's calling down. Uh, some of them we have already answered. Yeah, there is a lot of the same. 
There is no typical SAT or GPA for a Merit Awards a scholarship. There is just give your best, obviously the higher the better, and make a strong motivational letter and a strong CV. I always say that it's way too easy to be a good student if the only thing that you do is studying. So when we're assigning scholarships, the committee that assigns scholarships wants to praise students who have extra uh, things in their life and not just being very good robots in school. So that is what we're looking for. There is this one. How many times can I take Bocconi test till the end of this year until the winter session close? Uh, you can take the Bocconi test overall maximum three times, but speaking from July, so July 2023 till March 2024. Uh, so it's up to you how you want to use these free attempts uh, if you want to, as we were mentioning before, the spring session, for example, is very uh, it's very difficult. It's very hard. So if you're planning to apply only for the early, for the winter, you have to decide when you want to play these pre attempts. Uh, consider that we are right now, it's the 7th of September. So you don't have a lot of days until the deadline for the early session. So if you're interested uh, for the early, you have to check online um, which day are available right now for the Bocconi test. Uh, then of course our suggestion is always if you if you're not going to be admitted uh, during the early and you want to apply for the winter of course uh, try to get a better grade than uh, the one that you have used during the early so it's up to you to decide if you want to take one attempt right now and other two attempts uh, for the winter uh, you can take the test also for example during the month of October uh, the winter session won't be open but you will be able to take the test so uh, it's always a personal matter of how you want to, uh, I mean, how you want to face the, the session, but you can take one session in October, see how it's going to work, and then take another attempt later in November, December, or January. Yeah. Then we have a couple of other questions on the same topic. What is a good score at the Bocconi test? I've seen this like 20 times. Guys, it's really impossible to say because we changed the Bocconi test last year, so we don't have much statistics on what is considered good at the Bocconi test. So while the SAT is a bit more standard, we've been working with it for many years, the Bocconi test is um, a little harder to give you stats on. Out of 50, I would say that we, I mean, 17 is the minimum to even apply to Bocconi. So if you score lower than 17, um, we won't look at your application. And decent score starts from 25 and above, something like that. Again, it's very, very subjective. It really changes depending on how the other students perform. So it's it's really hard to um, give you statistics on this. Um, the other question that I've seen quite a, a few times is how much does it cost to secure my place once accepted and is it refundable? So it's around 2000 euros to secure your spot and enroll after admission. There is one specific deadline by which it's refundable. It's usually in January. So you know that by that deadline, which I don't know right now what the deadline is, but um, it will be in January or February. By then you will get every back but 250 euros of administrative fees after that deadline so from February on it's not going to be refundable anymore and the reason why we do that is because we have several rounds of application so we need to know your commitment that helps us understanding how many spots we can allocate in the uh, following round of application we don't do fee waivers neither for nor for the Bocconi test neither for the uh, application fee we don't do fee waivers for those two um, then is, a, is 1,550 and above on the SAT required for Bocconi? No, we don't require 1,550 and above at the SAT. That would be super high. I usually recommend 1,350 and above, possibly more towards 1,400. But then again, as I said, 100 times it balances out with your grades. Obviously, the higher the better. Um... Huh, this is a good question. How many students go straight to the master? How many instead work first and then return for master? Honestly, 90% of the students apply directly to Bocconi master after they finish their undergrad. Not everybody's admitted, accepted to Bocconi masters. So they might end up in masters anywhere else in the world at very good universities. 
but usually because the undergrad is only three years, um, students prefer to specialize a bit more before they enter the job world. And then honestly, guys, you have your whole life to work. So take advantage of the university environment as long as you can. Um, there are a few students specifically from the more applied programs. So the Warren in business applied to arts, business applied to computer science or artificial intelligence who prefer to go and work, but just because their courses were not the most generic, they were already a bit more applied. So it's easier to go straight into work and then maybe consider an MBA later on or go back to master's uh, later on. So um, that's the statistics. Yes, this we already answer. This, I have no idea what question it was. Can I apply to an English program if I take the Bocconi test in Italian? Yes, Elisa. Um, Elisa, I really hope that you are an international candidate. So, because we do have international candidate and Italian candidates. So, I repeat, if you're taking a Diploma di Maturità in an Italian liceo, Italian Scuola Superiore, in Italy, then you are an Italian applicant. All the other cases, Italian high school abroad, or international school in Italy, you are an international applicant, even if you speak Italian, even if your citizenship is Italian. So you can take the Bocconi test in the language that you prefer between English or Italian. If you're used to studying Italian, take it in Italian. It's probably easier. If you're used to studying English, take it in English, because um, you will see the math exercises, for example, in English. So it kind of depends on what you're more used to. But then you can apply to any Bocconi program in English or Italian. That's completely the same. It's totally up to you. To get the results of the Bocconi test, it, stay, it takes 48 working hours. Yes. No, it's it's 48 hours, no matter which days, no matter if it's a weekend or weekdays, it, it takes 48 hours. That's why for the early session, the last day that you can take the Bocconi test is on September 21, I believe, September 20 or September 21, because you need 48 hours to take the test. So yeah, September 20, sorry. Um, so that it takes 48 hours for you to receive a result and then you can apply. No, the early session is not binding. It's not like the early decision in the US. You can decide if you want to enroll after receiving your admission and you can also apply to other universities. That's not a problem. Um, can I use my IB grades as the grades required from second and third year of school? If you're doing the IBDP, you have to apply with your IB1 grades and the grades from the year before that, whether that was MYP or anything else that you did in grade 10. Okay, but I think that there is a lot of diff like a lot of the same questions over and over and over again. If you see unique and different questions that we haven't replied to, we can answer, but otherwise I think that we can also close the webinar. Yeah, I also uh please check also the all the link that we have posted in the in the chat, um because I'm sure that you will find a lot of uh, a, a lens answer to a lot of the question that you're posting. Um, and again, question on practice testing materials. No, we know that there are two practice papers online. Actually, there is a full online simulation of the Bocconi test that you can take on our website. But as I said, the smartest way to prepare for the Bocconi test is just look at the detailed program and bullet points of every topic that we ask for at the test. And it's like a checklist. This I've done, this I've done, this I have no clue of what it is. This I know that it's my weak point. This is my strongest point. So it's easy for you to just see how much you have covered of that program and where you are weaker, you probably want to study a bit harder and then just get an any SAT book and use that to train for the quizzes because that's the most similar thing that you can get. I'm also posting the um, contact for the fees and funding office and uh, right now also the contact for the housing office because and I also the admissions office. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, of course, because there are some specific questions in this specific area, so it's better to contact them directly because every one of you have different. Um... Yeah, there is the fees office, the funding office and the admissions office. So guys, if you have very specific questions on your profile, your school, your background, your um, family situation, please refer to the proper office and ask for the specific questions. Um, this with answer, Rafael. The tuition is the same for everybody, guys, whether you are EU, non-EU, or Italian citizens. We don't discriminate. It's the same for everybody. And then we have need-based and merit-based scholarships available. So this is the same for everybody. Um, I think, we, but I think we're done. Yeah. 
I think too, also some students are already uh, disconnecting. So I will say that we, um, I mean, one last thing, sorry, uh, about the, um, the communication. You will receive the recording as Ar Arianna was mentioning before. If this was your first time that you enrolled in a forum in Bocconi, you will receive uh, also other email like about the deadline for the early session. You will receive also the invitation for the open day. So always check your um, your email. There, there are also our campus visit. We're going to start also this year our open classes. So always check if there is something, some activities that will be interesting for you. Okay. All and right. Okay. So. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Valeria. Um, so it was a pleasure, guys, spending the last hour and a half with you. Go and have a great, great rest of your day and good luck, everybody, with your applications. Hopefully, we'll see you all next September on campus in Milano. Ciao. Good luck, guys. Bye-bye.